Golf Smarter, number 576, published on January 24, 2017. It's always the other guy's fault. Really? Let's start the new season with a golf etiquette refresher with Rick Pipel. This is Golf Smarter. Sharing stories, tips, and insights from great golf minds to help you lower your score and raise your golf IQ. Here's your host, Fred Green. Welcome to the Golf Smarter Podcast, Rick. Hi, Fred. Glad that you're joining us because I get a lot of emails from people asking about etiquette, asking about rules. And, you know, there's so much emphasis on education of golf for the swing. But there's a whole different element to golf that we really don't talk about much. And that's why I'm so glad that you're here. What is, talk about your golf education. Well, Fred, I noticed the same thing you did, that what people find if they're looking for education on golf is all about the mechanics. And my uh, philosophy changed when I started really seeing that more and more. And I realized that people need to find a way to learn the on the course behavior part of the game, or, you know, to put it simply, the golf etiquette portion of the game. And when people don't understand that part of the game, they won't go out on the course. They're embarrassed, they're intimidated, and they feel like they don't belong out there. And they're missing something great by not learning that part, which isn't as difficult as they may think. No, it's really not. It's, it's actually, it's common sense. And that's the thing that is so fabulous about it is that most of it is common sense, but you do need to learn it once. You know, as long as you've learned it one time, you should always have it. It's not something that you need. The repetition, like most of golf is, the repetition of, of getting it right. But uh, all you need to know is once. What are some of the most common mistakes that beginning golfers or uneducated golfers make when it comes to golf etiquette? Well, probably the number one mistake that most beginner golfers make is that, that when they go out, they feel the pressure to hit every shot, and they're thinking too much about what they should be doing etiquette-wise. Whose shot is it? Is it my turn? Where do I park the cart? All of the little nuances. So they're overthinking that part of the game, which will tighten you up, keep you from relaxing and enjoying yourself, and you won't have fun, you won't be able to enjoy yourself, and it'll make it a, uh, a tedious type of uh, activity, and it's a long activity if, you, if, it's, if you're feeling uptight, tense, and a little intimidated by what's going on in the course. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're not talking about the the rules of golf i mean the the rules of golf from the usga there aren't there aren't that many but most people don't know them we're just talking about common courtesy etiquette things like that that will like i said you know at one time you're going to be there um let's talk about some specifics here uh that people should know that they generally don't know or they need to learn the first time and get it into their head um uh, let's start at the tee box Absolutely. Well, I, I, I'll, I'll take it a step ahead, Fred. I think that it starts at home in preparing for a round of golf. Oh, to, interesting. To make sure that you're prepared with enough balls in your bag, enough tees, uh, bringing sunscreen, bringing the little things, making sure you have everything that you would use, a, a ball repair uh tool that you would use on the green so you're not borrowing or running out of things they don't always have to be brand new but bring the things you're going to need a jacket in your bag an umbrella so you don't get caught short out there and that alone will just give you that relaxation of it's behind me i'm ready to go when i get to the course uh then then it's a, l a little bit different than being at the tee box. But a lot of people who are playing don't even know what the tee box is, per se. Okay. If someone says, I'll meet you at the, at the tee box, they're not sure what the tee box is. It's a, it's a term that you and I use 
easily, but a brand new golfer may have never heard the term tee box because and, that's never mentioned in a mechanical instruction lesson. Right, and they may take it too literally and think, you, what, what is, I don't see any boxes out there. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> oh, and there's that little I, box where you throw the broken tees. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> Or you see them standing in a box somewhere, and <laughs> you feel sorry for the two people standing in boxes. That's waiting. not a good thing. That, yeah, that, no, I, that wouldn't be a good thing. I just call it the T, the, the first T, the T area. But eventually people will start to catch on as the more they play uh, when they hear the T box, and they'll, they'll start to understand those types of terms as – as time goes on, and, and they shouldn't put pressure on themselves to learn every bit of jargon that is used in golf. Uh, it's, it's not necessary for a beginner to know every little uh, word that's used that we've become accustomed to as men, I think, more than, than women. Mm. Growing up, I caddied, and there were no female caddies at the courses I caddied at, and now there are a handful of, of young ladies who caddy, but the, the women seem to be out babysitting. The men, the young boys are out caddying, and they've learned golf at a very young age and learned a lot of the things that women will struggle to know and other groups will struggle to know later in life because of never having had that experience. Caddies seem to be more and more rare um, at least from my experience, I, I don't play a lot of high-end or private courses, so I don't come in contact with caddies. Is, is that... Nor do I, nor yeah. do I. But from what I've heard in, in, in my research, I'm finding that caddies are less and less prevalent at courses. Yeah. It's, it's the cost. That the and and in today's economy, it's going to be even less. But who knows what the swing might be? But they seem to be moving. People want the pace to move quickly. That is the number one issue facing golf and golfers. Uh, they are concerned that they don't want to be out on the course for five, five and a half hours for the price they have to pay. So it's not the price per se, it's the length of time that they have to commit to getting to the course, being out on the course. And sometimes caddies can help things go more quickly, but at the same time, they aren't going to make it as quickly as driving in carts. Mm -hmm. And But again, people need to know, and this is part of the etiquette portion of the game, where to drive the carts, where to park the carts to make them the most efficient and most useful in playing a good pace of play and what the term is in golf, ready golf. Mm -hmm. Always be ready to move. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because it all comes down to respect for the game. And uh, it, it, it is so critically important. And I found, you know, especially as somebody who started the game later in life, um, and as somebody who came through the 60s and 70s of, you know, the time of, you know, question authority type of thing, that it's easy to start the game and, you know, start as a player, not start around, but start as a player with this attitude of, hey, you can't tell me what to do, right? But as, exactly. you, as you become more comfortable with the game and uh, you play it more often, you start understanding that respect for the game includes respect for the other players and their time as well. And, you know, playing to the pace, uh, I guess it is all about the pace of play. It all comes down to pace of play and respect for what other people are doing, right? Exactly. I, I, I have what I created an acronym uh, called a rare golfer, and the number one R stands for respect, and that's respecting the game, respecting your partners, respecting the other people playing on the course that day behind you, and also respecting the course itself by taking care of it and repairing the things that you might have inadvertently damaged with your club on a shot or whatever. And those types of things are very, very important. And you learn to respect yourself a little bit more by respecting 
all of those that I mentioned. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, okay, so let's go through your acronym of RARE, R-A-R-E. That was the first R. Next. And the second R, the, the a. second A is um, attitude. You know, being keeping a an optimistic, cheerful attitude on the course. We all know that uh, golf is a game of ups and downs. And one day you think, I've got it. I've tried a new grip. I've tried something different. And I'm hitting the ball well. And I've, the game is... I own it now. I know what I'm doing. And oh, that's a kiss next, of death. And the next time out, <laughs> it disappears. But as long as you, you're going to be a much better partner, a much better person to be around on the course, if you keep smiling, realize that it's only a game. But at the end of the day, people are worried about what they're doing and not concerned about what you're doing. And no one's going to remember your score. No one's going to really care. You know, 95 percent of the golfers out there, Fred, shoot 100 or over. Mm -hmm. So if you're really worried about your score, you're going to be counting a lot of strokes. And just go out there. Courses are some of the most beautiful places on on the earth. The way they're manicured, the beautiful trees, the beautiful scenery. If there's water nearby, nature on a leash. Exactly. And (laughs) enjoy those things. Enjoy the company of the people you're with. Take advantage of all the good things. Be happy you have the time to be out there. And let the score at the end of the day be what it is and be happy. So attitude is the second one, an optimistic attitude. Well, you know, we talk about that in in just uh, the mental game that if you have a positive attitude, if you have a good attitude about what you're doing, if you're enjoying what you're doing and you don't start beating yourself up, you're going to shoot lower scores, too. Absolutely. It's going to have a definite impact. on. It has for me. It had a definite impact on your scoring. My father taught me a long time ago. He passed away uh, in the 90s and 94, and he was a great mentor. And he told me that when I'm standing waiting for my shot, don't be thinking every possible angle and look at the shot, size it up, and start humming a song, your favorite song, or start whistling, and get up there and do that. When you, you've, hit, you've taken the swings, you know how to swing, give it your best shot, and being relaxed like that made such a difference in my game. Yeah, I just Rick. found that my mind was not on the shot itself. I knew what I wanted to do before I got up there. The, the humming made me think of nothing else but the song. But, Rick, I, I, really, I really hope that your dad didn't tell you to be whistling and humming while someone else is taking a shot. Only during my shot. <laughs> okay, Only <good>. during my <laughs> shot. Yeah, okay. If I started the other thing, I wouldn't be here talking to <laughs> no, you. No, you wouldn't. All right. R, A, respect, attitude, and the second R? Second R is ready golf, and that means keeping up that pace of play so that you, you move it along. You understand that golf is a game that is serious, but at the same time, you, time is, of, uh, is important to other people. You need to move, move along be prepared for your shot. Think about your shot before you get there. Think about where your partner's ball is. That's where you drop, bring a couple of clubs when you're being dropped off at your ball by your partner who's going to take the car to you. Don't have to be running back and forth. You know, give thought to th- those types of things and not waiting for people necessarily who are have to run back to their bag, even though they may be the furthest from the pin on the green. If you're ready to putt and they're not, and you're closer, go ahead and putt. Keep things moving. It's not inconsiderate. Yes, is that the USGA rule? No. But again, as you said, we're not talking about the USGA rules. We're talking about just basic common sense and courtesy. And those are the things that sometimes people forget, they wait, and the people behind them in the fairway are wondering what is going on up ahead. It causes frustration, so 
keep in mind ready golf the entire time, and it'll become a habit that will be tough to break after you get used to doing it. Yeah, I mean, we can talk about, um, you know, part of the rules that say that the person who is away, uh, Mm -hmm. their shot is is to go first. But I think the the best thing to do, if you're not playing in competition, I mean, if you're, you know, a a bet inside your foursome, that's one thing. But if you're not in a a competition with the whole round that day with everybody who's on the golf course, um, if you're not in competition, I would suggest that when you go out to the first tee, that everybody agrees who's in your foursome, your group, that everyone agrees from the start. Are we playing ready golf? Are we playing who's, who's away? You know, exactly. as long as it's, it's been laid out ahead of time. That's, you're right. At the first tee, some things should be agreed upon, like ready golf. And also, if you're new and, and feeling a little bit tense about the fact that you are new, you're not at the skill level of the other players or pretend, you don't know if you are but what you should do is tell the other people possibly in a you're at a charity event and you're put in a foursome where you don't know the other people let them know that you're a beginner and that you're going to try your best and you're going to have fun but you're you know if you're going to hit a few good shots but you may hit some real doozies and but you're not going to hold up the group. That If you let them know that you're not going to hold them up and they understand that, that goes miles in terms of starting the relationship with those people. And if you understand some of the terms they use, like they say, well, we're going to play ready golf, again, that you understand that, you agree to that, and as a beginner, you're keeping that along. You may hit a couple of shots, and now you're 100 yards off the tee after two shots. It may be time to pick up your ball, jump in the cart, ride up to the green with your partner, toss the ball on the green, try a couple of putts, and move on. Because score, when you're a beginner, is not at all important. It's going out there, enjoying the surroundings, enjoying the people you're playing with, and learning as much as you can, absorbing as much as you can without holding up the people you're playing with or going back to that first hour of respect and then the ready golf portion. And savor every good shot that you make because you will, new players will have a couple of good shots in a round and that is what brings people back to playing golf. I played with somebody who's, he's not a, you know, the, to me, a beginner is the person who's out there for the first day. Then from that point on, you're not a beginner anymore. But this guy's not been playing golf that long. But he holed out from the bunker on, on one of the holes that we were playing. And mm-hmm. you knew from that point on, this guy is hooked. There's no question oh. he's going to be back every week now. I've, and, and you and I have both been with people who you play 17 holes of mediocre to poor golf, mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. on the 18th tee, you just rocket one off the tee, yep. and all of a sudden Dead that shirt comes way. back, and you can't wait to get back <sighs> out there. And you may even want to say, let's play another 18, and yeah. nobody else is going to want to play with you, but you're ready to get out there you're again so right. after 17 lousy holes. That's right. It's always, on a bad day, it's always the 18th hole that is, ends up being <laughs> your best hole. Let's figure out uh, the E in rare, the last one, and then I want to get into uh, st- some nuances that even experienced players miss out on. But what is E first? E is ethical behavior. And the reason ethical behavior is so important in golf because it shows so much about a person's character. And while people are playing with you and observing you on a golf course, they see many facets of your personality, how you handle yourself in difficult situations, how quickly you can put a bad shot behind you, how excited you get when you make a great shot. And is the game all about you or is it about the people you're with and the whole experience? And ethical behavior can tell a lot. There was a survey done by the Starwood Hotel Group, and I found this very interesting and kind of disappointing, actually, but it's what the results of their survey showed, that 82% of executives who were surveyed who played golf admitted that they cheated when they played. Now, they didn't get into how they cheated, but 
that you know it doesn't mean they cheated through the whole thing. And then the 86 percent of those same golfers cheated in business. So I think that if pe- people see you doing something you know is wrong, they know is wrong, that's going to cause a little trigger to go off in your brain. And at least it'll make you understand who you're dealing with, who you're golfing with. If it's a business situation, it might give you pause or at least give you an indication of how you're going to have to deal with this person once you're off the course and maybe in a business situation. Now, you don't label them necessarily as a cheater, but think about golf as a character-building activity and a character-observing activity. And it's amazing what you'll learn about yourself and even more amazing what you can learn about other people while playing a round of golf with them. Oh, my gosh, yes. Well, we've done multiple interviews with a woman named Jennifer Monroe who talks about conducting business on the golf course. And uh, listeners should should go back to uh, some of those episodes uh, that we have done, again, with two episodes specifically, um, about the personalities, golf personalities, and then Absolutely. conducting business on the golf course um, back on earlier episodes of the Golf Smarter Podcast. You know, it's interesting. I play – one of my, my regular playing buddies is my clergy, a member of my clergy. And you talk about ethical behavior. This is a guy from New York City. And um, when he plays with friends, with people he's played with numerous times – the street kid comes out when he makes a bad shot. But if I've also played with him when we've played with strangers, and he is clergy. <laughs> I mean, he was like, jeepers, <laughs> creepers. <laughs> this is most, you know, is radical. Yeah, right. His most radical uh, ex- expletive is jeepers, creepers when he makes a mistake. <laughs> it's very funny. Let, let's talk about, let, quickly, if we can do a couple scenarios here, I'm going to throw these out. Give me, uh, you know, the most common issue that you find. Again, let's start at the tee box, the most common mistake um, when it comes to etiquette. Uh, and then I have a, a listener question after that. But at, at the tee box, the most common mistake that you've witnessed? The most common mistake I witness is that people uh, continue to go through their bag, rattling clubs around, getting their ball out, looking for a tee, and not paying attention to the person teeing off. Because I think when people tee off, everyone should be watching their shot if they possibly can, because sometimes it's, it's difficult to see because of the sun, etc. And people have a tendency to be focused on getting their own things together. Get it together quickly. Rattling of clubs and things like that can be very annoying and distracting to someone. And uh, so get ready as quick, again, part of Ready Golf. Get ready as quickly as you can. Stand in a safe place so that you're not in the peripheral vision of the golfer, and also keep it down and be a good partner and watch that ball as it goes off their club so that if they have trouble seeing it, you'll be a good helper in, in, in looking for the ball and finding it much more easily. Yeah, and there's frequently there's going to be errant shots. So if you have a sense of where it went out, where it is in the rough, uh, it's always a big help if there's a couple sets of eyes looking at it. Uh, I'm, I'm actually guilty of not doing that as well as I should. I, I will now improve. Thank you for pointing that out. Got a, a question from a listener, Matt McElroy of Brentwood, New Hampshire. And he says, I think one of the biggest questions is where to stand on the tee box and on the green. I've had people complain at one time or another from every single angle, yet the pros often are only a few feet from each other at certain times. What is the right call in a situation like that? I have a, a guy that I've played with that if, you know, he'll, he'll stop his swing and say, can you move your, your standing in his peripheral vision? And he gets all upset and, and like... He doesn't like telling you twice during a round. He doesn't want to be able to see anybody. It's like, come on, just hit the ball. Um, but w- what is the right call in a situation like that, both on the tee box and on the green? Where should people be standing? Well, depending on where the tee is placed and the cart path is, when a person is teeing off, they don't need someone standing behind them or too close in any direction. Too close is not good. And the pros have the ability to concentrate and focus a little bit better. They may be able to tolerate someone being a little bit closer because they have fans around, et cetera, whereas the average golfer 
where you park your cart, if you can stand up on the T level or a little off, and you would the golfer would be essentially facing you. They're not going to be able to see you in their setup and swing and, and making contact with the ball. The same thing is if you stand behind the person but give them enough distance so they don't feel like you're looking over their shoulder. Just give them some space and stay out of the peripheral vision. So I would say front or literally behind, but not uh, behind, not in the area that's looking down the fairway towards the uh, direction of their shot. Okay, and what about in the fairway when you're walking, um, you know, or riding, I prefer to walk. Say you're walking and your drive goes farther than the next person. You've already said, get everything together when you're about to take your shot. Play ready golf. But what if your ball is, um, you know, say uh, 15 yards to the right, but also 15 yards ahead of the person? Should you wait behind their ball as they take their shot? Or should you go up to your ball, get yourself ready, but get out of the way? I would, my philosophy is to stay, at that point, stay near your partner, but again, park the cart, and so you can look directly at them as if you can see their entire front of their body and see them hitting, uh, getting ready to take their shot, so they can then jump in the cart when they're finished and ride up to your shot. It's, it's, we're not good enough to be able to ride up to our ball 15 yards ahead. Even if we move 15 yards to the right or 15 yards to the left, we never know what's going to happen, and we're not wearing safety helmets out there. And that projectile can come at us pretty quickly. So, And it might put a little bit of pressure on the person who's hitting, too. So stay out of their vision in any way you can. And stay with them if possible, because it's not going to waste a lot of time. You can almost start sizing up your own shot when you're parked and waiting for them to take their shot, and you'll be much more ready and prepared when you get up to your own shot. Biggest mistake that you see in bunkers, biggest etiquette issue, um, lack of respect issue for the course and golf and your playing partners in bunkers. I would say that people, uh, there's a couple things. Number one, they drive the carts up too close to the bunkers, right up to the edges. And secondly, uh, people aren't aware, some, some people aren't aware that uh, it's more than just using your club to repair where you, the sand and smooth out the sand with your shoe or your club as you leave the bunker. The rakes are there for you. Walk in the shortest distance from the outside of the bunker to your ball. Put it down next to your shot. It's quick after your shot. It's one of the most difficult things in the bunker is not being able to touch your club to the sand in any practice swings. And people struggle with that. So it's a, it's a high-pressure shot. But... Rake yourself out and make sure you leave the bunker in the same shape that you entered it. That is the ultimate advice right there. Always, whether you're hiking, walking, playing golf, whatever it is, leave it the way you found it. That's or better. It. Or better. Exactly, exactly. And the, where most uh, etiquette issues really take place is on the green. Absolutely. Uh, people don't realize that shadows play a part in things, walking in people's line. Uh, and uh, the line of a putt, a putt can be changed so subtly that by walking in their line accidentally, uh, and again, if you are in a cart playing ready golf, you'll park your cart close to the green. You may not be on the green. Bring your wedge that you're going to use and bring your putter so you don't have to go back and get it chip on leave your club in a spot where it's going to be where you can walk back to your cart and easily pick it up or leave it with the flag and tend the pin but someone needs to kind of take charge on the green and you should be that person to step up tend the pin after marking your ball and let other people putt who and and know that 
it's important to if you mark fix any marks that you may have made through your ball landing on the green or again going back to the sand trap analogy leave the green in better shape so if you fix your own ball mark and you see others that people have not fixed in groups who have played ahead of you fix a few of those while you have time mm -hmm. while people are getting ready to putt and you'll be doing yourself a favor but you'll be doing the other golfers and the golf course superintendent a favor and everyone benefits from that but being on the green keeping quiet not taking too long i think that is one of the biggest mistakes that groups make and in holding up pace of play is they've watched so often the amount of time pros take in lining up and measuring their putts and seeing all the different angles and realistically we're so far from their level of seeing what they see give it you know take a good look at it try to measure the speed try to measure the angle and the uh the the way the ball is going to roll towards the hole get up and hit the ball if you start measuring it from four different angles and everyone in your foursome does that you're going to spend so much time on the green and again it, these are the things that slow up the game the most and are aggravating to the people behind you and it just causes a chain reaction um, and even if you're betting I mean it, that's that's your business to play for whatever wager you want but if that starts affecting the pace of play behind you, the course has the right to move you forward and possibly skip a hole. And unfortunately, the courses don't enforce that as much as they should. But do your best, take a good look, and get up there and stroke the ball. There you go. Rick Peipel, thanks so much for your time. I appreciate you coming on to the Golf Smarter Podcast and sharing this with us. Fred Green, it's been a pleasure, and I'm happy to come back anytime.